now when we're looking at different it's not exactly new age careers in finance but it's more about the different ways different subjects that can be combined in terms of creating very unique combinations and approaching the different finance careers so before i start with the careers in finance part so a lot of times students ask me that what kind of jobs will be replaced by ai how is ai going to be taking away the jobs and everything so i just posted something ai will replace you if your i is a artificial intelligence will replace you if your intelligence is artificial so you have to know how to apply yourself you have to have common sense you know you have to read you have to know the concepts in depth upar upar se karne se nahi hoga it is not going to work you have to really understand things very very well in order to be able to apply them in changing economic and business scenarios that becomes very important today so for that the depth becomes very very important so you cannot be lazy in terms of learning at all even more so today with more of chat gpt and google and everything available on your fingertips it becomes all the more important to have that level of common sense to be able to connect things to be able to see multiple things together and very very uniquely understand the markets and business and economy and psychology and consumer behavior and everything together it becomes extremely important today more so with chat gpt i'm telling you so please understand that so let's see different examples of applications of different areas in finance one of them we are looking at is walmart so say suppose do you think google Google will be able to get data of how many people are there in a Walmart store and how much time on an average they are spending in a Walmart store with the GPS data and all. I'm hoping and assuming that Google will not sell that Ashwini is over here in this place at this time and this many and spending this much time over here in this place at this time. But at least that amount of data, that data is not very personal data. The analytics that I can draw that how many people are there in a Walmart store and how much time are they spending? If I can compare the number of people and the time spent in In previous quarter with this quarter and if let's say there is a 20% increase in number of people and 10% more time they are spending can I assume that there will be approximately 30-32% worth of increase in sales because if more people come and if they spend more time I'll assume more sales are taking place can I assume that if I do before the company before Walmart releases its next quarter uh, this quarter's uh, financials and profits and sales and numbers and everything can I make a guess and based on that can I make a trade based on this information based on this analysis so using different kinds of data sets in order to make conclusions about something there's a variety of way there's variety of ways in which you can use data analytics and big data and all of that in order to take financial decisions lot of data companies like bajaj finance for example they use tremendous amount of data to evaluate how much loan i should give you cred variety of companies using different sources and different types of data in order to analyze study consumer behavior accordingly pitch products accordingly decide whether or not to give you loan how much amount of loan to give etc that is happening so using data analytics in a very very different way in terms of applying in finance and this is just one example but you have to understand how to apply data analytics in the space of finance right when you're looking at something called forensics so it is something like dr saluke from cid in the finance space so this this image is basically from a series called jack ryan the analyst it's quite a good uh, series so the idea is you try to trace money where is the money flow coming from where is the money going emla stands for prevention of money laundering activities we've seen for example Shilpa Shetty's husband Raj Kundra, how he's laundering crores and crores of money and all sorts of illegal activities he's getting into. So how do you trace money? How do you catch this kind of person? So CFT, countering funding of terrorism. All the terrorism activities are going to be requiring a lot of money. For example, the Bombay blast and all Yakub Memon was uh, involved. Salman Khan apparently tweeted in favor of this guy. So you have to understand the money, the money trail, the money flow. It's extremely important today. And people are using bitcoins, etc. in order to launder money to evade taxes or to sponsor terrorist related activities, etc. Forensics in money, the forensic analysis becomes very important. To uncover frauds, whether Adani Group is committing a fraud or a financial scam or something or they're pumping up the stocks or whatever. So you need to study money. You need to study the trails, the money trails, etc. in order to understand that. Can you study financial reports forensically? and analyze if there's something going wrong with the company or not. So financial forensics, very interesting space and very growing space. There's a lot of marketing in finance also. If you would notice, these are all advertisements from the company called Cred. There's an app, Fintech app. If you notice, all these people are catering to a specific age bracket for the audience. They're catering to somebody who's in their 40s. Because the young audience is automatically going to be using the platform Cred. It is the older ones whom I want to capture. So therefore, I'm taking these kind of celebrities or whatever you call these people in terms of advertising and promoting the app. And also because the age bracket of late 30s and 40s is the ones who are going to be generating revenue and income for credit because they'll have better spending power, let's say. So how do you plan the marketing, marketing strategy, the sales 
funnel everything there's a huge amount of sales and marketing uh, volume of work in in the finance space as well so understanding consumer behavior understanding behavioral patterns etc becomes very important to do this now say for example when you're looking at behavioral finance i had just mentioned the word called market sentiment so what is the sentiment of the market how can something like a market have sentiment there's a lot of behavioral finance that goes on that is how people react because ultimately the prices in the markets are a function of demand and supply people one day decided that they want to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a meme based cryptocurrency dodge coin and the valuations shot up they decided it is rubbish the valuations went crashing down when you're looking at the boom and bust in the cycle you see the tulip mania from the 1600s the prices went up shot up like crazy so how do you analyze that why do booms and busts happen read this book by morgan housel again i'm repeating the author's name same as ever beautiful book i'll give you a few recommendations towards the end when you're talking about technical analysis read this book pulled by randomness by nicholas talib outstanding book for example when i'm looking at behavioral finance you need to understand the behavioral aspect of finance so combining psychology with finance understanding the market market sentiment how the movements are happening how people are reacting for technical analysis and trading also to be tremendous help and it's very very important quantitative analysts so now there's a lot of tech also being used in terms of algorithmic trading in terms of high frequency see trading in terms of using data big data tech everything in terms of number based trading so when you're looking at trading based on number quant analysis analyzing numbers analyzing data making trades based on that or creating algorithms or computer programs and all which executes in seconds or milliseconds fraction of a second the trades are executed in order to trade in order to capitalize on any kind of inefficiency any kind of trend or anything so that is quantitative analysis when you're looking at the fintech space again the ui ux how the data is presented how the the apps are presented even the ui ux becomes very important the layout of the fintech apps there are so much of product manager roles product manager work that is involved in the finance space the look and feel how it is to be structured how it is to be made i mean lot of things along with it cyber security risk in it risk per se broadly it risk has increased significantly when you're looking at the banking space so when you're looking at fintech companies it is nothing but finance companies using technology to provide services bank jane ke liye bank jane ki kya zarurat hai right the number of cyber attacks and all have increased significantly over the past few years particularly post covid so we have to understand the it risk the data risk the system downtime risk for example somebody was uh, doing a case or something against zerodha and i think they won 5 lakh rupees because of zerodha's down time or server error or something they lost money in the trading bets and all again the legal aspect of finance also has to be very very good hedge fund trading big shot what's this movie if you want to it's a very very nice movie hedge funds variety of strategies using variety of different kind of strategies in order to make money in the markets global macro strategies merger arbitrage strategies variety of strategies being used over here venture capital is another space when you're looking at finance so you're investing in startups private equity there are private equity firms who specialize only in let's say biotech sector in the fintech space etc ai and uh, now we have this metaverse and all so there are so many uh, sectors sector specific venture capitalist funds also and there's so much of sales there's so much of valuation there's so much of analysis there's so much of deals going on so much of negotiation read a book called uh, never split the difference by chris was in order to understand negotiation so there's so much that is happening in terms of the startup space also understanding newer technologies understanding newer technologies understanding new spaces valuing different kinds of companies different business models all together become so interesting so there was a company it was a media company based on blockchain a ott kind of platform based on blockchain and we were valuing that so interesting to see the new kind of valuations and all that you do saas space is there software available as a service so how do you value these kind of different kind of business models and all it's very interesting to see the venture capital space when you're looking at sustainability and green finance you have green bonds climate bonds and given the extremities that we are witnessing in the climate space a lot of it is becoming a mockery because of idiots like greta thunberg and all but still when you're looking at green finance your sustainability reports and lot more is going to happen in this space as well because of water shortages and all coming in jal jeevan scheme is happening so how are different stocks reacting how are different kinds of investment vehicles coming in if the government comes up with green taxes and of course environment compliances and all are increasing for example how does a bs6 norms etc impact the automobile industry say for example if you increase the safety standards for the car where you mandate that without airbags cars cannot be sold it will have a major impact when you're looking at the the automobile 
ऑटोमोबाइल स्पेस सो हाउ डू यू एनालाइज दैट इज सो मच ऑफ रिलेशनशिप हाउ डू यू रेज मनी बेस्ड ऑन ग्रीन फाइनेंसिंग सोलर बॉन्ड्स एक्सेट्रा देन व्हेन यू आर लुकिंग एट द क्रिप्टो करेंसी स्पेस सो अगेन यू कैन नॉट इग्नोर द क्रिप्टो स्पेस इट्स नॉट जस्ट बिटकॉइन बट देयर आर वैरायटी ऑफ क्रिप्टो करेंसीज एंड लॉट ऑफ वेज इन व्हिच इट कैन बी एप्लीकेबल सो व्हेन यू आर यूजिंग द ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी देयर आर थिंग्स लाइक टोकन्स एंड स्टेबल कॉइंस एंड वैरायटी ऑफ फीचर्स दैट वी यूज फॉर एग्जांपल व्हाट इफ वी आर एबल टू यूज ब्लॉकचेन कांसेप्ट इन ऑर्डर टू रिप्रेजेंट द लैंड एसेट्स रियल एसेट्स so and the transactions in order to prevent any kind of wrong doing we've seen so much of land mafia and all these things in india so we need to look at those factors so cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency also serves as an asset class so i think jp morgan came out with a fund that is investing in crypto space and all so all those things we see there are even different kinds of spaces where you can combine let's say the legal and the finance space where you're into say suppose you have a legal background and you want to combine it with finance in terms of deal structuring so how do you structure deals how do you structure do the due diligence uh, get the entire uh, restructuring of a company or whether it's a bankruptcy driven uh, restructuring or bankruptcy driven proceedings happening or whether it is a valuation that you're looking at an acquisition of a startup or something when walmart is acquiring flipkart stake how do you do all that combining legal and finance together when you're looking at the taxation part of it for example phone pay earlier had the uh, holding company in singapore and they had to shift it to india because they're planning listing of phone pay so how does it impact the taxation how should you create a corporate structure in order to minimize tax taxes you could save millions and millions of dollars in terms of taxation so for example we see at times there is a company who's in uh, which is in cayman islands let's say and then that is a holding company there in singapore and that company is investing directly in indian startup or to a holding company in india so how do you do the tax tax structuring so creating tax advantage or tax alpha through structuring understanding international taxation and finance you need to have a very good understanding a strong understanding of both the fields so combining these expertise in various fields with finance and how do you look at careers in finance economists and all all the time in terms of you know making forecasts for the finances and the your entire market depends on the economics of things i mean economics becomes a very very broad subject but how do you apply economics in the finance space there is a variety of application of careers in finance one of my students who's an architect and is studying finance basically wants to get into valuation of properties and all so valuations of real estate valuation and restoration of properties and how you can uh, create alpha in terms of you know converting certain kind of properties into something else so we see all those you know palaces being converted to uh, heritage hotels and also how does that work how does that dynamic work so she is working on that aspect